Hello everybody, this is Rabbi Hirshhorn together with Kant and Natasha. Um, we're here to commemorate, commemorate the day of Yom HaShoah, the day that was put in the calendar uh, in Israel uh, after Pesach, Pesach that symbolizes for us the exodus out of uh, a very difficult place, um, but remembering, remembering what was, what has been. Obviously everybody knows uh, that uh, we are again in a very difficult place, a very unusual place, um, and a place that uh, brings with it a lot of loss, um, a lot of sadness, uh, a lot of loneliness, um, but our plan, our goal is uh, today to remember in particular uh, all those that have died uh, during the Shoah, during the Holocaust, all those that have suffered uh, and had to leave their place where they lived the, their families live, often for generations, if not for many, many centuries. Uh, you know, you don't remember Rabbi Fischel, he was our mashgiach uh, for many years, and he was a survivor. He and his father had been deported to Auschwitz from Hungary, uh, and he had survived. Uh, and he was the person who took care of uh, all things kosher at the Hebrew. And when he came to uh, Yom HaShoah, he often said that for him, it was a day that would fill him with some, whatever it is, something good. Um, and the way he explained it is, if somebody is sitting Shiva, when you or anybody else comes to pay a shiva visit, to be with you, to be a Menachem Avil, to comfort the mourners, there is something that you actually get of comfort. And he would describe himself as such an Avil, a mourner, only that he was mourning all year long. For him, what has happened was not easy, just like for many, if not all, survivors to forget it is present. And so he who would be sitting shiva, so to say, who would be mourning all year long, Yom HaShoah felt like a day where people come to visit. And so are we, the generation of the children of the survivors, like uh, myself or Natasha, and many others, but all the many Jews that lived in America that maybe were never touched, uh, we are there to uh, not just remember those that have been with us, but also uh, honor those of the of those who have survived. Uh, we have a number of uh, Holocaust survivors at the Hebrew home as well as in uh, River Walk, and those are the ones that we have in mind. Um, I would love us to uh, begin. Um, you know, there is... Uh, the Holocaust obviously was a time when the Nazis uh, wanted to, you know, the, exterminate all of uh, Jewish people. And there was really an enemy. There was really um, Adolf Hitler, may his name be soon forgotten, and all the Nazis, they represented what was evil in this world. Now, with what we are going through, there is no physical person that brings evil. 
now we are fighting a virus and that virus doesn't know what religion you have, what country you come from, if you're poor, if you're rich. But we are in a similar place where we have to come together. And thank God there is so much good that happens where people come together while we are still apart. So let's begin. We begin with a beautiful song that echoes with memories of town that was so significant for the Jews. It's called Vilna. Every gathering in Vilna Ghetto began with this song. It says, Vilna, city of spirit and innocent, where quiet prayers were murmured, soft secrets of the night. Vilna, our hometown, our longing and desire, how often your name calls forth a tear from my eye. The world, beautiful world that was lost to us in the shore. You know, all those who are with us, that we are still able to see, to hear, uh, who bear witness to what has happened. Soon there will be a time that uh, we will be moving from uh, witnessing uh, from those people to just having the memories 
Thank God there are many of them who have put down their memories, either in tape or in writing, will sing together while I will be lighting candles. The words of Animamin. Animamin is uh, so central to what we believe uh, that Mashiach will come, that the better days are coming, that there will be a time for redemption. And even though that uh, Mashiach is not coming, I still believe. I still believe. And I am lighting the candles for all those that have perished. for Yom HaShoah that was written by uh, Rabbi Lionel Blue, who was a child of survivors as well, born much, much closer, uh, uh, and he lived in England. And his prayer is, uh, we remember, we remember our six million dead who died when madness ruled the world and evil dwelt on earth. We remember those we knew and those whose very name is lost. We mourn for all that died with them, their goodness, their wisdom, which could have saved the world and healed so many wounds. We mourn for the genius and wit that died, the learning and the laughter that we're lost. The world has become a poorer place and our hearts become cold as we think of the splendor that might have been. We stand in gratitude for their example of decency and of goodness. They are like candles which shine out from the darkness of those years and in their light we know what goodness is and evil. We salute those men and women who were not Jews, who had the courage to stand outside the mob and suffer with us. They too are your witness, a source of hope 
when we despair. Because of our people's suffering, may such time never come again, and may their sacrifice not be in vain. In our daily fight against cruelty and prejudice, against tyranny and persecution, their memory give us strength and leads us on. And to bring closer the memory of some of the souls lost, so many, we can only remember a few. Here's a beautiful song written in Vilna Ghetto by a, poem, a poet, Shmerke Kaczynski. Um, he wrote it uh, as he was mourning the loss of his beloved wife. The poem is called Spring.
feeling spring you know being in your rooms a lot some of you who might have a chance to go outside or dare to walk outside you see the signs of spring, you see the beautiful flowers that come out, uh, the trees that have been barren of leaves are now growing new leaves. Nature seems like, you know, I'm ready. We are ready to go and to move on. Uh, and there is a lot of comfort in that, that the world will continue and there's a lot of hope for, that we will be part of that uh, springtime and we'll see the summer and we'll be able to be in this world just as we are supposed to be. Um, Irene Adler, Irene and Bernie Adler that uh, unfortunately many of you don't know uh, have been uh, two people, a couple that lived with us many years, um, very, 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 very deep souls, special people. And Irene was uh, also a poet and wrote about her experience. And I would like, in honor of her, to read a poem that also brings the idea of like planting of bringing new, of spring, of not giving up. This poem is called Remembering My Father. And as you will see from the poem, it's about when the Nazis came and took her father. My father looked up, his eyes were sad. I'm not ready to leave the village, my work is not done yet. I am planting a tree. Life has to go on, even if I am not here anymore. The sun is shining, buds are on the trees, flowers, life around us. My father's hand planted the tree, the hand which talked without words, the hand which gave a child a hug, the hand which held the Sefer Torah, the Torah scroll. The hand which waved goodbye to me, the hand which fed me when I was young. The same hand planted the tree in the ground with strings that life continue, life must go on. My father loved life. He believed only love he had, he wanted the pear tree to grow and blossom like a symbol of life in misery and death. The village he left was tears in his eyes. The wagon door closed on him hard. They took my father to Auschwitz where people suffered, where millions died. My father saw at Auschwitz a raised hand which chose between death and life. The land, the hand, which was a puppet of a monster's mind with no human feeling at all inside. My father put his hand forward, a gesture of a question why, but he never got an answer. The monster had showed him he had to die. As long as a human heart is beating, as long as there are two outstretched hands, as long as pear trees are growing, as long as religion and love live in man. They could not kill his ideas, his beliefs. Yes, my dear father, religion and love will continue with future generations to come. Irene mourned her father, poet Bunim Heller mourned 
his sister. He remembers her. Mein Schwester Chaya, my sister Chaya, with long black braids and bright green eyes. She took care of all the brothers. She fed them, she watched over them, she would sing them pretty songs at night when little children would grow tired. She did everything. She cleaned, she cooked, she served the food, she washed our little heads. All she forgot was to play with us. My sister Chaya, my sister Chaya, with the black braids.
So many carry such heavy, heavy memories, heavy burdens of the people. I was very privileged early on at the Ibrahim to get to know Reb Mendel. Reb Mendel was a, quite a character. He was a, a Cohen and uh, I was very impressed all the time because when he would do him, when he would do the priestly blessings for us in the synagogue, where the Kohanim stand with their hand extended, blessing the people in the community, it didn't feel like he was knocking on the doors of heaven. It felt like he had such strength. He was like ripping the doors open. He had been married before the Holocaust with three beautiful young boys and he had to witness how the Nazis would kill them right in front of his own eyes. He came to Auschwitz very early and, uh, and was able to survive and telling me a number of stories. But what I remember most, and especially at this day of the Yom HaShoah and Gevurah, the day of remembering the Holocaust, but also the power and the strength and the courage of those who resisted, was that when they were together in Auschwitz at one point, a small group of them, and it came to... Uh, the moments of celebrating a day of uh, Yontif, just like Pesach or any other things that they remembered. They sang and they sang a song, Utsu Etza, uh, which the words means that, you know, people, others have planned, uh, have ideas of like uh, destroying us. Utsu Etza Vetupar, Davro, Davro. Yakum, Ki Manuel, you know, that we will remain, we will live because God is with us. And so I would like us to sing it together. Always a moment, and I hope that you might pick up the melody and even join in. <laughs> Yeah. 
survive, we will be strong, we will be able to go through this together. Uh, our resilience and our strength, our hope uh, is strong. And so, uh, with God's help, Ki Immanuel, God who is with us, we will be going through this just as well. Um, we'll continue with the El Mali Rachamim, the prayer, uh, where we ask God to uh, bring all the souls that have left us, obviously all the souls that have died during the Shoah, during the Holocaust, all the souls, but I'm keeping in my mind also all those who have left us now with uh, this crisis of the virus, people who have left us not being able to be together with the people they love and who love them around them, so that God should bring uh, peace, comfort, and protect them and will guide them, their souls, under the wings of the Shekhinah, under the wings of the Divine Presence. Um, Natasha will be reciting, will be reciting El Mali Rachamim. Exalted, compassionate God, grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure, whose radiance is like the heaven. To the souls of the martyrs of our people who gave their lives for the sanctification of God's name, and the men, women, and children who were slaughtered, burnt, and killed in the Holocaust, we pray in their memory. May our lives reflect a measure of their bravery, dedication, and purity of soul. May their souls be bound up in the bond of life. May they be remembered with honored. May they rest in peace. And we say, Amen. Amen. You know, we will conclude today this uh, commemoration for Yom HaShoah with the Hatikva. You know, we know that if uh, we would have had the privilege of having 
uh, our own land, uh, maybe the fate of many of the Jews would have been different. But we are so happy, so proud of the state of Israel uh, that uh, this is the beginning. There are Jews living all over the world and there will be Jews continuing to live. But we know we have a place that we can call home, that we can call home as Jews. So let's all conclude together by singing the Hatikva, and I'm sure you will uh, excuse us that uh, we don't stand uh, like for the Malay Rachamim or now, but uh, our technical limitations keep us tightly seated on our chair. But we hope you will sing with us. to all come together again to see each other face to face, to be around tables, to be around gatherings, to know that we are all together. Even though we are so far apart right now, this experience shows us how connected we are. So God bless you, stay safe, stay healthy, continue to pray for all those who are helping uh, you at the Hebrew home and all over the place to be safe. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Thank you. From our family to yours, all the blessings.